The Return of Raleigh Romero. Hello, fight fans. This is Coach Nathan of NSChamp7.com with a recap of probably the most bogus ring stoppage in recent ring history. And that's the supposedly ninth round TKO victory of Ishmael Barroso, who is now 24 wins, 4 defeats, 2 draws with 22 knockouts, at the hands of Rolando Raleigh Romero, who is now 15 wins, 1 defeat, with 13 knockouts. First off, one of the reasons I didn't preview this fight was because I figured Barroso, the 40-year-old challenger who was a 9-1 to underdog, would be just a tough tune-up for Romero. And, um... Actually, he was supposed to face Alberto Puello, a tough, undefeated 28-year-old Dominican with a record of 21 wins, zero defeats, with 10 knockouts. But that fight was pulled because um, Puello failed a drug test. Now, in witnessing Barroso and training for this fight, he did show punching power in the gym, which was also backed up by the fact that he has 22 knockouts and 24 wins. Raleigh also acknowledged his punching power, likewise, after the fight. CompuBox numbers show Barroso with a 54-39 advantage in power shots, highlighted by the knockdown he scored in round three. Romero, who displayed the same chin-up, hands-down boxing style that got him flattened by Tank Davis, did show good use of his legs and his defensive movement to avoid Barroso, In the early rounds. However, Raleigh was still behind on all three scorecards at the end. Speaking of the end, Tony Weeks, who's usually a solid referee, he scores a knockdown on what just about all ringside observers, and and including the Showtime announcers, agree was a clear shove. Now, the next round being more bizarre, it showed both fighters are throwing punches near the corner. At the ring, nothing clean landing. Barroso barely loses his balance while punching, and Weeks steps in, stops the fight, awarding Romero not only a ninth round TKO, but a neatly gift wrapped WBA interim title belt as well. Now, this caused (laughs) the highly disappointed crowd to just shower the ring with booze. But to their credit, Romero and his coach, Coach Bullet, they stated that they also wanted to uh, want the fight to continue. Everybody, uh, fans, all the observers, fighters, corners, they all agreed the fight should um, was prematurely stopped. Everybody agreed except for the referee, Tony Weeks. Now, considering the various takes um, on the referee's decision in the match, most floating around is a conspiracy to keep Romero victorious for a future big money matchup, but it all could also could be just a poor night in judgment. Or one can remember the opposite approach that Tony Weeks took in what in one of the most underreported, under the radar ring tragedies of last year. And that's uh he refereed the fight with David WBA interim super middleweight champ David Morrell, who not only beat up and stopped. Ado Shabosi Newley in 12 brutal rounds, but also calls Ado's, who took an extra three to four rounds of a beating in that fight, to spend 12 days in a medically induced coma to help recover from a brain bleed. Ado's will probably never boss again, but it is good to report that he is home healthy with his family. Now, nobody knows but the referee involved, Tony Weeks what that can do to his ability to referee a fight properly in the future. So he could be suffering from shell shock, just like a fighter who fights after he was KO'd and hasn't mentally recovered. Remember, he went from one extreme to the next. One match stopped with too much of a beating. The other match last night with very little beating at all. Maybe it's time for Mr. Weeks to take some time off to reassess whether he can properly continue to be a professional boxing referee. It also didn't help matters much when, uh, instead of explaining his rationale to the, to the announcers, he got out of that ring as if he had a hot date or a plane to catch, further adding to the speculation that the fix was in. Now, as for Raleigh's future, he should forget a Tank Davis rematch, unless 
he learns how to tuck that chin a little bit, raise those hands, or just takes the fight, gets knocked out again for another big money payday. On the other hand, a fight with Ryan Garcia makes much more sense in that it also shapes up to be a big money matchup and there's a 50-50 chance as to who the winner will be if both, as both guys fight with their chin in the air. You could label it the battle of the boxing trolls or the battle of the vertical chins. <laughs> so that's my take on the fight, folks. But don't forget, for elite boxing instruction, elite boxing analysis, and elite boxing philosophy, check me out and subscribe to NS Champ 7 Part Boxing Series at nschamp7.com. And because next week will be the long-awaited matchup between Devin the Dream Haney versus Vasily Lomachenko, I would definitely be seeing you the next main event.